any immediate questions or, or issues with um, the, the Slido poll, or if you have any questions, share them now. Otherwise, I think we will get started with our first session, if that's okay with everyone. Okay, so our first sort of segment is called, oh, I think we're gonna set the scene actually, sorry. Sorry, Becky, forgot a bit there. Um, I think, Becky, you're going to share some slides on. <laughs> I'll share them now, here we go. Okay, thanks, Becky. Um, so uh, before we jump into that first session, sorry, we just want to um, sort of talk about why we think um, transport fits in as a key part of the um, climate week. Um, so I think most of us will be aware that, that um, climate is a huge contributor to um, uh, emissions and greenhouse gases in the UK. Um, and obviously some of this is you know, going to be um, I mean, we can't really impact on, it's gonna be cargo and everything getting into the shops and everything like that. But um, obviously us traveling every day by car is, um, is contributing to this. We want to both um, you know, use cleaner vehicles and we support the transition to electric vehicles, but in general, using cars less and increasing walking and cycling is a key part of our decarbonizing transport strategy. And it feeds also as well into Richmond's uh, local, local transport goals and our active travel strategy. So I think I, I know a big concern for me and, and a lot of other parents is the impact of air pollution itself. Um, it can have a huge impact on children in particularly. And so as part of that, um, you know, I think even when we are walking and cycling, it can be something we're thinking about when we're perhaps traveling on busy roads and things like that. And so sometimes it can feel like you sort of immersing yourself in, in poor air by walking and cycling, but it really is the um, best way. We can all work together to sort of improve local air quality as well. Um, we do have, if no one is aware, we do have a, um, it's called the Richmond Active Travel Strategy that was adopted last year that sort of um, lays out our path to how we aim to increase uh, walking and cycling across the borough. So um, do you have a check out of that on the Richmond Council website if that's of interest. So now we will go to our um, first activity. I think Becky will share another screen. So this is something called a Miro board. Is that, is that, I think that's what it's called. Um, so essentially what we want to do is we've got this sort of few sort of um, I guess you call them prompts um, for um, sort of situations that we've all experienced out and about. And we'd like to use this as sort of an interactive time to sort of um, share some of the things that um, we have found success with. And, you know, these are some of the, the things that I, I don't know about you, but I find that I can avoid some of these situations by just hopping in the car, but um, that doesn't mean it's, it's the solution. So I, you know, just to sort of, Share, share my recent find that has gone down a treat in terms of the walking to school with a, a five-year-old on a rainy day. We got a color change in umbrella. Um, and so it's, it's got the stars and, and planets and the sun on it. <laughs> and uh, my, my son gets very excited now when it's raining and goes and finds his umbrella so he can watch it change colors. And it's one of the few things that I've really had success with that didn't involve a snack. Um, so, so just to put it out there, does anybody else, you know, I mean, we all obviously have different experiences. We, we might not all have, um, I, I think I'm relatively lucky in this that I only have, have one child. So it's relatively easy to sort of um, pay attention and make sure he doesn't go, go running out into the road. But um, I, I salute anyone that does have, have more than one child, but it'd be good to hear if anybody else has, has any thoughts or, or even sort of more um, sort of disaster situations that they would like tips and, and tricks on. So if you if you do have anything you'd like to, to um, contribute to sort of any of these or um, and add a new one, you can either raise your hand or pop it in the chat. Just 
So um, I had a, a good one for a, a toddler tantrum at a bus stop, um, which is um, when a toddler is they're just sort of learning their numbers and how to say them, get them to say the the numbers as they come on the on the bus, just to give a bit of a focus and a distraction. Um, I don't have kids, so that's probably, maybe you're saying that's an unrealistic way to stop a tantrum, but it's a, a tip that I heard. No, no, that's a, that's a good one. You know, every bus. Is that my bus? Is that the bus? Is that the bus? So yeah, no, no, looking up the numbers is, is quite a good, um, good tip. And I just see we've got a, a comment from, from Julia. Um, bringing along plenty of pencils on a train trip. And um, yeah, I can, I can vouch for that one as well. And, and I, think, I think with traveling on trains, I just nev never underestimate the kindness of strangers and the, the help that, you've, that you can get from people. Um, my, my kids are uh, teenagers now, so it's a while since I've had to carry buggies up upstairs and things like that but um yeah the number of times I've been helped has been um really really positive yeah I'm, I'm you know my, my son loves going on the train but within about five minutes is sort of okay <laughs> what are we doing now ready to go off and you're like um, I, I used to try and time our train journeys on, on longer journeys with with meal times, so that a, a, a chunk of the journey time was was taken up with picnic time. That's a, that's a good one. Oh, nice buy. That that is also one that uh, is is hugely popular at, at uh, the age my son's on. Um, lots of spying with my little eye. I think we actually did that on the train last week. I see that Raphael's on the call. I'm not sure if you, can you hear us, Raphael? No. <laughs> um, but I know Raphael's got uh, twins and a cargo bike, so uh, Seeing how that works is definitely an inspiration for if you're in a scenario going for a, a, a picnic um, with all that clobber that comes with a picnic, all the, the, the games and the food. Um, I think a, a cargo bike is definitely a, a trick for that scenario. So put that one in. And I think um, having when you when you're buying the, the different bits of equipment, um, like like towels and rugs and all those kind of things, thinking about things that pack up smaller. So knowing that you're, you're gonna be carrying everything that you, you need to take, this um, does uh, fo focus, focus your, uh, um, your choice of um, what you buy. So sort of instead of having a, a, a a solid bulky cool box, having those insulated bags um, and having pack towels instead of the bigger fluffier ones and things like that. Yeah, we've got a, um, it's a picnic blanket, but it's got, it rolls up and then it's got a handle on it. And because it's not very heavy, my son likes to carry it. So that's always good help. Um, get it, getting the kids to carry, <laughs> carry things. Yeah, I think, I think luggage that the kids carry themselves is, is the, uh, it's a great one. Um, we haven't had anything on, on needing to, to change a big baby when, when out and about. Um, I, I just sort of, um, if, if have to sort of change him once he's old enough to stand, just sort of find a wall and use the pram to sort of hide the situation. <laughs> and sort of like a triangle between a wall, myself and the pram and just sort of, um, get them get them changed as as modestly as possible, um, but I don't think anyone sort of sort of uh, is is too judgmental of those sorts of things because so many people have um, been there and done that and they sort of um, 
No, don't really uh, do you too much. And I think in your, your local area, you get to know the places that have good changing facilities. Um, <laughs> Yeah, which cafes, which shops. And so when on. my son was younger, he was terrified, absolutely terrified of the noisy hand dryers in, in toilets. So he would refuse to go into any toilet that had those. Um, and then if it went on, he would just sort of scream and run away. So I had to figure out where we could sort of um, get them changed, where there was either a separate changing room or there was no, um, they didn't have those sorts of noisy hand dryers. Are there any other ideas in the chat? I can't see the chat through my view. Does so anyone um, put any ideas in there? There's one um, about walking to school on a rainy day, finding the puddles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sister, make sure make sure you remember the wellies. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I said a statement here, um, I find it's much easier to engage with the little ones when on the train compared to when we use the car. Sorry, can you say that again, Francesca? Yes, there's one here that says, um, in general, I find it's much easier to engage with the little ones when on a train compared to when we use the car. Right. Any other ideas for toddler tantrums in the chat? I think there was. Um, the the play the the bus stop game where you say aloud the letter sounds on bus stops, and when the children can say a word beginning with the sound. So you could just put bus stop game. <laughs> Great idea. Out of interest for people who are on the call, um, maybe you could say out loud or put in the chat whether you've got children and if there's a how old and, and how many. I mean, I, I think the, I've said I try and avoid snacks or trying to things that, you know, anytime I think, you know, walking when my son doesn't want to walk um snacks toddler tantrum snacks but it might just be particularly to him and his um endless need for snacks but i actually when we went to school this morning um he went outside and was like oh i don't want to walk and i had gone out on a site visit yesterday and i randomly had a tape measure in my handbag so i said let's measure things and he immediately perked up and um, we didn't actually have to measure anything in the end but sometimes you just gotta look in your bag and, and see what you have that could be at all interesting um to to a little one that's a bit unusual but he got um it, it had a much better impact than i thought it would but it really uh, helped me out this morning Is there anything else in the chat? Because I'm not able to see that. Just one comment um, about sort of um, the children and ages and things. So there's um, two children, both adults now, but I remember these issues when they were small and twin girls, both five years old. Okay. Should we move on to the next, um, the next activity? Um, we can always return to this question if needed. Um, so I'll, I'll swipe across the mirror board to the next question, which um, Jane, who's on the call, is, is going to introduce. Yes, thank you, Jane, in advance. I'm gonna be taking notes on this one. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so thinking about cycling with children and how it um, varies so, so much over, over the ages. Um, and and really, when when the children are little babies, it is that it is it is difficult to to cycle. I didn't I didn't cycle when mine were 
until they were about nine months old when they could sit up in a in a bike seat and then there's so many so many sort of gradual phases that they go through until they um, become independent um, cyclists on their own so I just thought it would be it might be helpful to think about um, what those what those stages are, what can be useful um, as you progress through those stages, and also what's what's been really useful equipment. So um, it'd be good to hear from from other people as well what what they find helpful. Um, and I know that the the type of equipment that you can get is developing all the time. Um, it may it may be one of my my regrets that um, when my kids were little, cargo bikes were very much uh, um, were quite quite an exotic thing. So um, we never had a, a cargo bike or a trailer. We managed with um, a bike seat on the front and on the back of the bike um, when the two of them were were really little. Um, and then and then progressed to uh, tagalongs and trail gaiters, um, and then each of them progressed to their to their own bikes. Which um, so it probably perhaps I should go through our the phases we've um, we've identified a bit more in a bit more of a structured way. Um, so from about nine months old, um, we had we had uh, seats on the bikes. Um, there are seats on the front or on the back. Um, we had a seat on the front, it meant that we could still carry panniers on the back. Um, and it's also, I also found it easier to talk to the children when they were sitting on, on the front. Um, and that works well with a very, very upright style, style of bike. Um, when we had two children and then the bigger one went on on the back um, and the advantage I think of the um, seats that you have on the back of the bike is that they do tend to be a bit more supported and if the child falls asleep then that's a more more a comfortable ride for them um, then moving on to um, when the children were big enough to start pedaling themselves so they would learn to ride their own bikes in traffic free places so starting off with a, a balance bike where they have no pedals um, and then gradually moving on to their own own pedaling um, and then when they moved into being able to cycle practical journeys initially that would be on um, traffic free routes that we would hunt out and then um, with an adult sort of bookending the child um, we would um, gradually move into onto quieter streets with them. Um, and I think ending, Jay? Uh, so one adult cycling in front of the child, one adult cycling behind the child and cycling a bit further out than the child so that any traffic that was passing the child would have to give them a lot of space. And then just gradually, gradually building up to longer journeys, um, busier journeys. Um, and they did cycle training in school um, and the, the equivalent of cycle proficiency, so now about bike ability, um, and they're now sort of cycling, cycling to secondary school to sell themselves and cycling other journeys out and about. So I don't know if there's any questions from people or if there's anything in the chat about things you found tricky. I have a question for you. Um, how old were you were your kids when you started like putting them on the sort of bikes attached to, to your bike? So like, you know, the ones where they sort of go onto the back. Uh, 
so from about about four um, so we've got a, a resource sheet that we'll be sharing um, later, um, which has some images of some of these. In fact, Becky, do you want to share that image yeah. now? Would that be helpful? And we can talk about some of the different bits of kit that have been useful. Or sh shall I share that? It's okay. I'm done. Okay. There we go. Okay. So this um, is my cursor visible on the, no, it's only your cursor that's visible. <laughs> you want me, do you want to share it, Jane? That'd be easier. Okay. So am I sharing now? Yes, yes, good. Uh, so. so this, this um, is an example of the type of front seat that you can have on, on a bike. Um, it's, um, so it's, that's good for, for younger children. They, they grow out of it um, maybe at about, um, one and a half to two years old, but um, Mark and I were talking just the other day about how 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 they vary. This this bike here, it's an example of a Dutch style bike, so it's got a really low step through frame, which is helpful when you're carrying children on the bike as well. And it has um, both the front seat and you can it's a bit dark, but you can just see and and the back seat as well. That's the kind of setup I had when mine were little. And then on this slide as well, there's a, a couple of different um, towing setups. So this is um, a trail gator, which attaches to the child's bike. So, and it also um, folds back and clips onto the frame of the adult's bike. So once you've reached a place where it's traffic free and the child can ride their own bike independently, you can unhook them. And then if they get tired or if it's you want a bit more control over them, you can hook them up again to your own bike. Um, on the top left here, this is a, a similar arrangement, but I, I, it's one I understand is a, sort of a sturdier, um, sturdier version of this. Um, and then we've got a couple of examples of tagalongs, which is where it, the child can't ride it independently. It's it's um, it's almost makes a tandem out of the out of the adult spike. But you can see here in this image, um, it's quite a quite nice setup to go out exploring with your with your child. Um, the the onto the oops. Onto this screen, we've got an example of a bike for carrying children, which is suited for um, transporting older children. And I can see this one's also got an electric motor. So taking account of the uh, increased weight of the children as they get bigger. So they've got a seat at the back as well as a seat just here on the crossbar too. Um, we've also got um, examples of trailers that the children can sit in with a bit of weather protection as well and a couple of different types of cargo bikes um, this one's a tricycle and this one's a two-wheeler any any questions in the chat or contributions Not at the moment. Well, well I, I was just going to ask a question. <laughs> um, so how old were your kids when they started um, cycling? Um, 
like on their own, but sort of off street and versus um, on street and things like that? And did you wait till they had the bikeability training? Um, so I think the, the move to cycling on street accompanied by parents, that, that was quite, quite a leap. And that was um, sort of about five or six, I remember. And that's um, the first time I cycled with them, cycling on the road um, was with a friend who had older children. So there was that sense of someone else has done it um, can follow in their, follow in their footsteps. Um, the, um, they didn't start cycling to places on their own until they were about um, 10 or 11 and they had done quite a lot of, of cycle training and they'd also covered a lot of, um, a lot of miles with us um, cycling accompanied on, on roads. Um, and I think there's, there's a lot of reassurance to be taken um, from having seen them, having cycled behind them a lot and seen them learn to, to you know, keep their um, road position and know what to do at junctions and so on um, before, before setting them off on their own. But, but that was quite a, a leap of faith as well. I'll just well do a little plug for um because the equipment can be quite expensive to, to buy up front if you're a little bit unsure about the cycling and how it's going to work for your family. Um, but we have got a um a, a scheme we're running as a council uh, with a company called Pedal Um My Wheels, which we'll share the link to after this call, where you can um you can rent one of their bikes, so a cargo bike or an adult's bike, which you can attach equipment to um for a month or up to three months. Um if you don't like it, the company will come and will, will come to you and, and collect the bike. But if you do like it, um, there's sort of a discount, a sort of payment package um, to make it affordable to buy it over sort of monthly instalments. Um, so it's just a way um, for people to try something and see if it works for them. Or if they don't like it, then try a different model. There's quite a few different types of cargo bikes on there, um, as well as adults and, and children's bikes. Um, and we've also got an event at Marshgate Primary School on the 15th of November, which, which anyone's welcome to go to, where we've, we'll have a range of cargo bikes that you can have a pedal around on the playground and, and have a go on them to see whether um, they work for you. So there are opportunities out there to, to try things before you buy it. And I'm sure there's a lot, um, if you approach a, um, one of the uh, many cycle shops in Richmond, uh, they might be willing for you to try them or cycle around sort of, um, on them before you buy it. So, so do ask questions about opportunities to try things if you're a bit hesitant or on the fence about um, investing in equipment. Um, do you want me to share the Miro board again, Jane, or? Sure, yeah, I'll stop sharing. Okay. I can work out how to do that. There we are. So are there any other tricks of the trade that anyone else on this call has got that we could put on our, our board for cycling from zero? I just, I just saw in the chat now um, the comment about the first aid kit, which I think is a really good reminder. So there's plenty, plenty of grazes along the way. I'll put that at the top to apply for all, all years, really. I suppose at this time of year, it's uh, remembering to charge bike lights, which I'm, I always struggle with. Um, yeah. But if you've got children, it's an added thing to make sure you've got um, lights and reflective. Yes. Any other comments in the chat to add before we move on to the next question? Oh, let's uh, let's move on, Becky. Okay. So 
so this question is um, what stuff do families carry? Um, so perhaps we could have a look at that question before we go on to the how can you carry it without a car? So I don't know if in the in the chat you want to between us all list the um, infinite amount of clobber and stuff that are is attached to having a family. Um, so if you want to put in the chat um, the stuff that you have to carry, maybe you're concerned about how you would do that without the car, and maybe Jane or Francesco Marga, you could shout them out so I can put them on the board. I mean, the basics for, for you know, kids of most ages, I find, is at least some amount of extra clothing. Uh, what, what exactly it is varies depending on the activity and the age of the child, but I, I always seem to be in need of at least sort of, you know, an extra pair of socks or something like that. Um, obviously, I, I've mentioned it before, I'll mention it again, snacks, snacks and an impossible number of snacks. We are getting better about it, but sometimes we forget to obviously bring a bottle of water. Toys. <laughs> Toys and books. Sports kit. So this is on, on the chat now. Sports bags, school bags, lunchbox. What about the type of stuff that you wouldn't necessarily have to have when sort of traveling with your child, but in terms of, sort of um, other type of family equipment and stuff that's maybe sort of not not directly linked to having children, is there any of that stuff? I'm thinking like um, food shopping or other large heavy stuff that you'd be a bit concerned about. Taking stuff to the charity shop that the children have grown out of. That can be quite a big load. It's very specific, but the one that always gets me and sort of makes me get in the car is cat litter. It's about a cat and bags of cat litter are very heavy. <laughs> Anything else in the chat of think about the stuff that you currently carry date, you know, in your general weeks or on holidays that you'd be a bit concerned about doing if you didn't have a car? It's the garden centre shop, isn't it? Getting the bags of uh, the compost and the, the bedding plants in, at the beginning of the summer. Or even if it's not about um, you personally, if there's um, things that you think other families might be concerned about um, who are on this call. Musical instruments, they can be pretty bulky. Yeah, my brother played the tuba. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was because my brother's very tall. He was the only one big enough to carry it. <laughs> so we can, we can add more to this as we go on. But the, the next question is, um, if you're trying to reduce your reliance on a car, by maybe you've got a car but you want to use it less or maybe you're thinking about not having a car at all um how could you go about transporting this stuff um for on the school run or for weekend trips or on holidays um what are your options for uh, transporting stuff so if you want to put any ideas in the chat or, or speak up as we i'll get do another color sticky note for the solutions um, i mean home delivery is I always feel like it's a bit cheating because obviously things are still coming to my house in a car um, and it's an even bigger, heavier, dirtier car than mine because it's some sort of you know, delivery vehicle. Um, but it's, it's always been, um, you know, I, I tend to try and buy lots of bags of, I'm going to go back to cat litter, but if I buy like three or four bags of cat litter and have them all delivered at once, then I sort of feel a bit better about it. Um, 
for the, the garden center, oh, sorry for the garden center stuff um we although it's not for our home we we, we use our cargo bike a lot to move around tools and soil and all, all sorts of things like that so that that sort of works pretty well um it does help that our cargo bike has a uh a, an electric motor with it so it just helps get those those heavy things up the hill Yeah, I think there's there's an awful lot that you can fit into a, a set of panniers on a bike as well. So that um, that covers a lot of the the day to day stuff. Um, and then I I use a bike trailer for those um, garden centre and trips to the tip and so on. I mean, the, the, the most basic answer to anything is sort of a, a rucksack. And then, you know, we've got obviously adult ones, but we've also got a couple um, that are child sized for, for a son to, to carry around so he can carry some of his own stuff about. Um, but just so many, so many rucksacks, different sizes, different, different pockets for, for different things, that sort of thing, always very helpful. And for, for for holidays, I think the 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 advent of the wheeled suitcase is is the uh, the lifesaver. So so the kids can um, have been able to to pull along their own their own suitcases for a long time now. Um, I've got a um, a dog and we um, it gets quite boring doing the same walk that's sort of 10 minutes distance from your house so um, we got a, a bike trailer which second hand it was 30 pounds um, so, and that's given a lot we don't use that that much for the dog but it's given a lot of confidence if you have got something unexpectedly heavy like going to the garden center or the tip that you can have it so I'd, I'd very much recommend the bike trailer or something that you've got on standby just in case you're caught out having to carry something heavy um, I think, and I think a, a trailer is um, it's a lot it's a lot cheaper than a cargo bike, and it also if you don't have as much space for parking it, our, our trailer dismantles quite easily and can takes takes up less space. After getting the trailer, we discovered that the dog fits very nicely in a rucksack, which is a lot more handy for getting <laughs> in and out of the house. So, um, and it's quite a small dog, so we just continued having him in a rucksack, which is a lot easier. So the bike trailer is relegated to the recycling centre and gardening centre trips. Um, what about the um, sort of extra clothing and sports kit and lunchbox? If you're not um, a cyclist or don't think you'll be cycling, how could you do that on a school run with kids? Okay. I think carrying their own stuff is the main thing for the school run that like that they they carry. Okay. Right. Just seen the time. So I think we'll we'll stop on that one. What we'll do is after this session, we'll share this mirror board or sort of um, pictures of the mirror board. So you can have them and I'd encourage you after this session, if you wanted to sort of continue the conversation with um, people at the, the school gate or friends and family, to sort of how would you navigate these situations about a car? Because it gives you a bit more confidence when you've heard that other people have done it or their tricks to go into it. Um, before we end, we just wanted to have the opportunity to, um, to look at what support you think the council can um, do to better help you walk and cycle. Because we've talked in this session about um, so the, the changes that um, the individuals can make, um, but if you think there's any support that the council can do to help you walk and cycle more, if you want to put any ideas in the chat, um, then, then do. And I think I'll just um, I was just going to give a, a quick sort of overview of some of the stuff that we um, have available and on sort of offer. As Becky mentioned, we do have Pedal My Wheels, which is a great way to um, uh, purchase a bike. Um, we It includes cargo bikes, but also just um, standard bikes and also sort of adapted bikes like um, tricycles, those sorts of things. Um, so they can be a great way to um, purchase a bike or even to just try a bike if you're not sure about purchasing one. 
Um, we have online request forms uh, to help prioritize where we put on street cycle parking. So if there's a place that you would um, like to go by bike, but there's no, no place to leave your bike outside, um, we've got um, a form on our website where you can um, request a location. Um, and we also have an online request form for bike hangers, which we're rolling out across the borough. Um, and those are on street, little essentially a sort of a little shed. Hanger makes it sound much bigger, I think, than they actually are. Um, but they fit six standard bicycles. They unfortunately don't fit cargo bikes. Well, if they did fit cargo bikes, you can only fit one cargo bike in them. So it's not the most efficient use of space, but they fit six um, standard bikes um, and they're particularly helpful. Um, ah, question, how does one try pedal my wheels? Um, there is a link, I believe, Becky, on the Richmond Council website, or you can go directly to um, the uh, Pedal My Wheels website. And as a, um, it's open to anyone who works or lives in Richmond or other participating boroughs. There's, there's lots around. Um, and I think you just fill out a form saying what you're interested in, and then they sort of get in touch. And like I said, it's just sort of a monthly fee. And then if you don't want the bike after a month, you can can give it back. Um, or you can sort of uh, continue to um, rent it and then eventually you'll own it outright. Uh, and that includes, I should say, that the Pedal My Wheels includes an offer of a one-on-one um, -on -one cycle training session to help you get comfortable with using the bike. It would be particularly helpful, I think, if you're um, you know, used to just a standard bike and you're um, looking to get a cargo bike or another non-standard bike, because um, they can be a little bit different in how you um, maneuver be different and you know how you might want to position yourself on the road will also be a bit different. Um, so in addition to cycle parking we do have as mentioned um, cycle training available if even if you don't use pedal my wheels and um, we've got one-on-one -on -one cycle training available for adults. Um, anyone that, that lives or works in the borough again can get a, a cycle training session for free. Ooh, an opportunity to share cargo bikes. Um, I think Becky mentioned that they've got a session where you can go and try them out. I don't think, I don't know. I think we've been looking at sort of improving options to, to sort of allow people to trial them sort of like a, a library where you can sort of, you know, borrow them for, for a set period of time. Um, but it's something we're still trying to sort of, I think, figure out the logistics of trying to really um, do that on an ongoing basis. Um, and I think just sort of more broadly, we are working quite hard to introduce more cycle lanes on some of the busier roads across the borough. Um, we managed to put in some facilities as part of our response, COVID response last year on Q Road, Castlenow and Hampton Court Road. We're looking to do some, some more on um, the A310, Strawberry Vale area, um, and sort of working to progress things further along on Q Road and Hampton Court Road. So we are sort of slowly putting together, hopefully a, a um, better cycle network that will um, be a little, have a little bit more um, security and segregation from vehicles. Obviously the new 20 mile per hour speed limit. Um, one of the reasons behind introduction of that lower speed limit was to um, improve safety for walking and cycling um, with um, slower vehicle speeds. If for some reason a car does hit you, you're less likely to be seriously injured if they're traveling at 20 miles per hour versus 30 miles per hour it's not great um but um that's that's um one of the things that can be quite helpful um have i is there anything i'm forgetting jane or becky that we have out there oh the other thing i should mention is school streets um if you've got children in a prime we focus primarily on primary schools but also secondary schools um if you think a local primary or secondary would benefit from the introduction of a school strip, which is a timed closure outside one or multiple school gates at um, drop off and pick up times, um, would probably recommend in the first instance that you speak to someone at school or other parents to, to sort of gauge interest. But we do have a program of introducing school streets. We've introduced quite a few in the last 12 months. And I think we're looking to um, introduce a few more in the next 12 months. So. Um, 
it is sort of widely sort of there needs to be some desire for them and they don't work everywhere but if we don't look into it we don't really know if it will work so um, <laughs> do uh, don't be shy about trying to push one forward at your local school. Um, I think it's also um, useful to mention the car clubs because um, whilst there might be um, my, most journeys you might be able to do without a car um, there there are times when when you just you just do do want a, to have the use of a car um, and car clubs can be a really affordable way of having a, a, a really flexible way of, of hiring a car um, taxis are also an important part of our our transport mix and of course the whole the whole public transport network And um, the the um, document that we'll be sending around after after the call um, provides links for for car clubs information as well. Perfect. Um, that's great. Um, so I think we are just about at the end of our time. Um, like I said, we've got a few things that we can send around. Um, we do have, um, we are hoping, I should say, that people might want to make a pledge um, in the chat about what they can do to, to um, uh, use the car a bit less for family trips. And I think we also have a feedback form. Um, Becky, you're going to have to let me know how, how we find that because I have forgotten. Yeah, so let's let's do the pledges, and then um, after this session, we'll email you um, the slides. Um, because as Jay mentioned, they, as well as those sort of pictures of cargo bike models and bike models, there's also a lot of um, resources, so links to where you can do the pedal my wheels and all these different things. And in that same email, there'll be a link on how you can provide feedback on this session because um, that the feedback would be really useful because we're doing the same event in um, again in another borough um, uh, next week. Thank you, Becky. And so I just I simply want to um, thank everyone for coming along today. And I hope um, you have found it useful. If you didn't find it useful, please do the feedback. So we, we know that it wasn't particularly useful and we can sort of try and adapt it a bit um, if we do something similar in the future. Um, but I know that I am keen to try a few things after, after this today. Um, and just want to say thank you again. <laughs>